this, uh, but he still wants to make small changes and uh, a little bit what we worked on. So, what you have to say about the Indian um, uprising players? Uh, well, uh, first, okay, I'll use this one. Um, well, first, first of all, um, don't know a lot about Indian tennis, but obviously, you know, I've been around to, to follow the players of the past, and uh, there's been a lot of great Indian players. And uh, of course, in general, I think um, India probably has quite a bit of potential. It's a growing economy, um, a lot of more interest about the sport. Um, you have some 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 great. Players in doubles, uh, singles has probably been a little bit more difficult, um, which is a little bit more of a challenge. But uh, at least there are some some players they can look up to. Uh, but it's still 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 a long way to go because in order to succeed in tennis in general, uh, yes, you need a good environment to start. You need a lot of skills and good coaches from the beginning. And in order to get to the top of the tennis, it requires that you actually travel quite a bit and, and compete, play a lot of matches, and that's the challenging part, I think it is. You are representing times or what was so how privileged you feel to be And now I feel very nice to have the invitation here, and uh, I heard about it a few years ago, and um, you know I thought it was a good idea to once again come back to India here to, to spend a few days here enjoying it and uh, being part of this uh, show here so um, it's good. You have coach uh, like to Roger Federer so what do you feel the environment over here is there any uh, environment which can create Roger Federer in India as well? Uh, you mean create the... Uh, great, great potential. I mean, uh, there, there's always some potential because if you look at tennis uh, over the last 20-30 years there's definitely been some changes uh, when I sort of came up as, as a young guy, there was mostly players from the US, Europe. Um, but over the last 20, 30 years since tennis became part of the Olympics, uh, the tennis has spread around and there's a lot of players coming now from you know, Asia, China, Japan and, 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 and India has some potential as well here. So the sport is growing in this part of the world and uh, uh, so, so definitely on, on the right track, I believe. In what way you are going to mentor the players over here who are playing the Under 60 tournament? How are you going to mentor the player? Um, well, well, there's so much you can do as a mentor. You can always give some some advice, something to think about, some importance of the game. Uh, that's that's our key factors in to succeed. So uh, it's it's usually when you do get some advice, it's just one or two small things that maybe can make a little difference. That you think a little bit differently. You feel what's important and what's important to work at um, so so it's I, I know that from from my own experience you know sometimes you only need to hear one little thing to make you think a little bit okay I didn't think about that and then so sort of you can go from there so Stephen, uh, tennis is a, is, a, is, a, is a sport it's a game of you know stamina but still uh, Stephen, uh, you are known for your uh, for your cool campaign mm -hmm. yeah. as well as on the court and as well as off the court which is that thing what uh, kept just going with that um, yes, um, coming from the Nordic region of, of, of this world, I think uh, the temper is quite cool up there, the weather is cool and we stay cool. Uh, I used to have Bjorn Borg as an idol. He was, uh, as you know, called almost the Iceman on the court and, and I think everybody looked up to, to him um, as, as a child, so that was my idol and you know, he was a perfect example how to behave on the court. Uh, and it suited me quite well, I believe. Um, but it's not like that for everybody because some people are going to have more fire within themselves and maybe show more expression. So it's really finding yourself on the court. It's nothing wrong but being angry. We just have to show it in the right way or, you know, yes. Because there are certain things that you can do and not do on a tennis court. There. So it's, it's, it's always a challenge, you know, how to, to be out on the court. Um, you know, mentally it's, it's, it's a tough game, physically it's a tough game, so uh, you know, it takes a lot of learning how to, to use your inner strength. So, so what do you want, uh, just, Stephen, as you are in Mumbai, and, and Mumbai happens to be, uh, uh, I guess, is a city of, uh, you know, film, Bollywood industry is there. Uh, a great Indian actress, Sri Devi, she has passed away. 
So do you have, uh, uh, would you like to say speak at some, some words for that? Uh, well, for sure, I don't know a lot about Bollywood. If, if I would have known, then I would do, but I can't make any comments about it. Sorry about that. And so, what do you think, what can be done to make the game more popular in our country? As a more organized, more uh, infrastructure should be built or more sponsorship should be made? What, what? Um, well, it, it takes time for a sport to catch on. Um, normally, you need uh, some idols, heroes. Um, and infrastructure is obviously very important because all the work creating the future tennis stars will start at a club like this, for instance. Uh, this is where you need to have the facilities, the time on the court, uh, the coaches that will learn you the skills of this game. It's, it's a very complex game, tennis. It takes a lot of time, a lot of repetition. and uh, so, so, so the environment uh, where you grow up is very important because the first five years on the tennis court that's sort of when you when you learn the game how to hit the ball and the technique so it's a very important time and from then on you know you, you need to work your way up and once you get to 15 16 that's probably when you start to need to travel and, and play international tournaments to play against you know other players around the world uh, but it's very important in the beginning for playing tennis, it requires a lot of stamina. Are you going to give any tips to small little kids how to improve their stamina? Uh, well, it's very true. It's um, it's a physical game, it's a mental game, and um, the easy way you can, yeah, it, it. I mean, I try to tell a lot of young players not. It's not the amount of hours you spend out there. It's it's being smart and playing enough hours and and do it in a or can you say a very structured way um, but I think the main thing in tennis is how do you get better, how do you train your mental strength and your physical strength, that's by playing matches uh, matches is the best way of getting forward uh, because it's very different when you play a match and when you practice so it's, it's a key factor to, to getting a good tennis players to play lots of matches that's the only way I believe Good morning. Uh, I mean, to be honest, we grew up watching you and Boris Becker playing 88 to 90 Wimbledon. Yeah. I can remember each and every, uh, I would say, moment of it. And that's where I think tennis started became popular in India. Oh, it, it is. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That time frame, you know, otherwise cricket was the only thing in India. Okay. So you also helped, you know, our generation and now my daughter is playing here, you know, so that uh, okay, tennis that's has started uh, percolating to next generation. My question to you is, in your time, serve and volley was kind of a style of the game. And now, uh, very few people see uh, that kind of a style. Is it because of the speed of the game or technique has changed? Um, yeah, I'll try to answer in the best way. I mean, it's nice to hear that tennis became sort of popular during my times. And, and I always have a feeling that, you know, I always had a lot of support from, from India, a lot of people and a lot of fan letters and things. So that's. That's nice to hear. I think uh, the serve and volley game was something that uh, was was a big part of the game when I grew up and the way I played, the way Boris played. Uh, but there were during those times. I think what has changed over the last 20, 30 years, um, you know, the the coach has generally got slower. Uh, the ball has got a little bit heavier, which uh, both those things are a disadvantage to playing serve and volley. I think the rackets, the technology, and mostly the strings within the racket has changed quite a lot. So nowadays you can sort of both have the power and the control. So there's a lot of things that come together uh, where it would make it far more difficult to play serve and volley. Um, I, you know, I doubt it over the next 10 years we're probably not going to see a true serve and volley player. Uh, but I think it, it's a mixture in between would be, would be great to see. And, also, one must remember playing serve and volley is something that requires time. It probably takes a little bit longer to learn, uh, but it requires a lot of practice when you're younger too. And um, you know, you you know, that's maybe people don't practice enough on it. And you don't really need a serve to be a serve and volley player today because it's played from the back of the court. But uh, it would be an advantage if you can. Do a little bit of it in, in tomorrow's game, I believe. Where you know, I think Roger 
Federer is a perfect uh, example of being a, probably the most complete player there is in the world today. He can actually do everything uh, which very few players you do. Uh, I mean, a lot of players, even the best, they, yes, they can play serve and volley, but maybe not to perfection. Okay, everybody happy? Thank you. Global Advertiser for innovative outdoor solutions.